All right, so we're live. So we're here with Dochi. Where are you at right now? I'm in Los Angeles. Nice. Yes. You, you love it out there? I love it. I absolutely love it. It's like Florida and New York had a baby. It's work, but it's also vacation. So it's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. No, that, that's really cool that you're enjoying it. Um, we saw the Kiss Me More remix that you posted on Instagram. Oh, my God. And TikTok and Twitter. Uh, you killed that. You ate that. Like, that's crazy. Like, talk to us about, about your verse on that, like what you recorded. That was cool. Yeah, I was just in the studio. I had just came from a meeting and I love the song. I love SZA. I love Doja Cat. And I was just like, if I could be on the remix, this is how I would approach it. And I just wrote it real quick and it was fun. It was just in the moment. Yeah, yeah. man, you heard that. I saw SZA commented too. Yes, love her. <laughs> That's the girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. And then you're having that moment on uh, TikTok with all the glow ups. Those are really fun to watch. Yeah, the fans got really, really creative with that. Like, I think that whole trend is like super cool. It's something that everybody can be a part of. And it's kind of made Yucky Blucky become this whole moment. And it's really cool. That's yeah. so cool. Well, yeah, um, for everyone. So this is going to be a podcast and video and everything. So for everyone listening or watching, could you just do a real quick intro? Like, 30 seconds of who you are because we're going to dive deeper into it like you're from florida and you know everything about you but um if you just want to do the quickest intro absolutely um i am dochi i am a songwriter and entertainer here in los angeles i'm originally from tampa florida and yeah that's me <laughs> that's so cool um yeah no we're excited and florida is a cool place and like Throughout the years, it seems like some of the most creative people are just popping up out of Florida and looks like you're the next one to, to pop, you know? Oh, yeah. Florida's finally having its, like, big moment, especially, like, uh, like around Tampa, Miami. Tampa and Miami have really had a lot of artists coming out. The Bucks finally won the Super Bowl. And it's just been a lot of attention on Florida right now for the music scene. And just it's been a great year for us. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So coming up, I uh, heard you were really into theater and performance art. Um, is that still a huge passion of yours or like how do you view that space? Yeah, um, I started off acting a lot. Uh, my mom signed me up for every sport there is. I did dance, I did ballet, tap, jazz, pretty much everything in fine arts. I went to a performing arts school. Um, and I mean, as far as like drama and theater, I would say like in my own way, like me doing my TikToks and doing skits with my friends is just kind of like my way of expressing myself in that avenue. But I've always been involved in the arts heavily. I've always loved just the craft of art. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that comes across really well in your music too. You, um, you just, your voice and the way you rap and sing and make music in general, like you just command attention. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're in control of the track and it's really, it's really fresh and refreshing to hear that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Like when me and Gary V or whoever, my wife, like whenever we're listening to your music, like in the car or wherever, it's like, wow, she has that control that a lot of more, you, you almost hear it more from like the huge multi-year established big time artist, but you have that control and it's, it's just so, it's so, it's there. You know what I mean? Like you can't ignore it. Thank you. I think just a lot of that comes from, I don't know, the way I was raised and just how I was trained. My mom just kind of was always pushing me to uh, demand the stage and command my presence and assert my presence when I'm performing. She was harder on me than my teachers. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It paid off. So I want to talk about, oh, the places you'll go. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of walk through the project a little bit. Like you have a in my opinion, you have a number of like different vibes or modes or just mm -hmm. approaches on the whole project, but it it's so genuine. It's mm -hmm. like to the listener, it's really like a window to who you are. Yeah. So I just want to know like what you were thinking about when you put that together. For sure. Um, have you ever read the book, The Artist's Way? No, I started yeah. it because someone suggested it to me on audio, but no, I didn't finish it. <laughs> okay. So I read the book, The Artist's Way, and I did like 
all of the weeks. And it's basically like this uh, artistic creative recovery course um, for the listeners who don't know. And I just kind of felt like I was stuck in a rut in my art creatively. I just felt blocked and cluttered. So I started this book to kind of self-help and um, get through some things creatively. And it ended up inspiring the concept for the project. Um, a lot of things that were talked about in the book was mending the relationship between you and your inner child. And I realized along the way, when I grew up, I wasn't very nice to myself sometimes, especially when it came to my art. I had to reassess why I was doing it, where it was coming from and really nurture my inner child. And so as I started doing that inner work um, and going back into my childhood and just forgiving myself for some things that happened and forgiving other people for things they did to me that may have affected me creatively, I was able to be fearless in my art again and really let go of perfection and how things are supposed to go, the idea of fame and why I wanted to do it. And so it made me, it forced me to dig into my adolescence and I started writing from the perspective of my inner child, which is what Oh The Places You'll Go is, like Yucky Bucky Fruitcake and all of the songs kind of sound really colorful and youthful and bright. And I wrote from the perspective of my inner child. And that's what that project was about. Um, aesthetically, it was really inspired by Dr. Seuss. Uh, you hear like a lot of children's books references in the project and things like that because it all is coming from my inner child. And it's just about me mending that relationship and freeing myself and forgiving myself. So all the places you'll go, that's what happens when you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For everyone listening or watching this, like, oh, the places you'll go. I mean, go, go listen to it right now. It's actually not even that long. It's it's like a yeah. quick, quick journey. You know, mm -hmm. I like it. I like the length. I like, I think it's only seven tracks, right? Yeah, seven tracks. I think it's about 15 minutes, if that. It's very cool. It's a very cool person to who you are and what you're about to do. Um, and yeah, talking about the books and the children's stories and everything. I know you're a fan of Junie B. Jones. Yes. Wow. I mean, can I curse? Yeah. She is the baddest bitch, okay? <laughs> she is the reason why I think I'm so feisty. Junie B. Jones is sassy. She was creative. Like, I just resonated with her so heavy. She was amazing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, no, I was talking to my wife before this started, and I told her that you were a fan of that of Junie B. Jones. And she was like, oh, me too. And I guess, like, who 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 wasn't from, like, your age group really, but yeah, she's dope. Um, so talk to us about your favorite song. What's your favorite song on the project? My favorite song would have to be, it's an interlude. It would be God and it would be Yucky Bucky Fruitcake for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I really liked what you did on God. It was like, it's just so interesting because like I said, the way you control the track, it's like you want to almost, you want to listen to it more than once, even though like that's kind of not even a traditional song or anything, you know, but it was really cool. And then you said, you said some quote, uh, you're the product of the greatest artist of all time, God. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's like a big part of your view on everything. It is. It's a, it's a huge part. I feel like that is my why. Like I, for a long time, I feel like I was creating from a place of, I didn't know why I was creating. I didn't know where my creative energy was coming from. And my why was kind of just like very egotistical. Like I'm making art because I want to be the best and I'm good at it. So I got to be the best and da, 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 da. But then I realized that like creative energy is literally my purpose. My purpose is just to create. And I feel like me creating is literally honoring God and I'm a vessel of creative energy. Um, and it kind of like, takes it from a place of uh, ego to a place of worship. So now when I create, I feel like I am literally honoring God just by being honest and authentic and allowing creative energy to flow through me. So God is, my concept of God is a, a really common motif in my art always. That's so cool. It's such a cool perspective too, because you know, when people talk about artists that influence them, it's like you just said, the greatest artist of all is your influence, you know? And in, in addition to others, but that's a cool thing to say, you know? That's really cool. Yes. <laughs> on, on something real, you're really singing to them. 
<laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was a fun one. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. That was cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting to me is um, the credits on your on the videos that I was watching. Like you're creative director on Yucky Blucky Fruitcake and uh, styling on What's Your Name. Like you don't see a lot of people, like I guess professionally going about it that way, but also like taking it that serious, you know, to like put the credits and like credit yourself on what you did exactly. Like what's your approach to visuals? Um, my approach to visuals, I. I pretty much, me and my manager collab a lot with all of my visuals, all the treatments and everything. She's a director as well as a manager, as well as a writer, a creator, and, you know, holistically, and I am too. So we have a really small team. It was mainly just me and her, the videographer, and a couple of people in my city. Um, and so as far as, like, my approach, I just have a vision, and I try my best not to shrink it and get creative as possible as I can to make that big vision come to life. And Yin will collaborate with me to use my ideas as a foundation and she'll expand on them. And we'll just keep bouncing back and forth. But things like styling, creative direction are all important to me. Um, and I just naturally want to be really involved in the details of everything because down to the colors, the reason why I choose a certain costume, the reason why my hair is some way, it's all symbolic and it plays a part in the story. There's a reason why and it's important. So I don't like to lose creative control ever. Yeah, that, that's really inspiring. And shout out to your manager. I've been texting with her. She's yeah. she's cool. Yeah. She is. yeah. She's amazing. It's good to have that relationship with your team, you know, to really trust each other and work with each other and to see like someone believe in you, but also like put their neck on the line, like with yeah. the creative. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So on a yucky, lucky fruitcake, you say a lot of great lines, but one line that stood out was when you said uh, you used to do karaoke, Paramore, and then uh, yeah. you're singing in the background. The only exception. Ooh, yes. That's cool. <laughs> that was that was a that was a that was a moment. That was a cool little pop out of the song. Not a lot of people caught that it was playing in the background, but I love how you caught that. Paramore was like. Haley Williams, oh my goodness, a huge inspiration to me. Like she is my first exposure to rock. And I know rock is a whole other world and a lot of people would debate that she's like pop or whatever they want to. But um, how I grew up, that was my, Paramore was my exposure to a whole nother alternative form of music. And so um, I would literally sneak and I grew up in a Christian household. I wasn't allowed to listen to secular music. So I would sneak and listen to Paramore um, in my room and teach myself like how to sing like her. So yeah, that was a that was a huge moment and a common motif in my life. That's cool. Well yeah. I don't know. One day I'm sure you'll connect with her and make something magical. I'd cry. <laughs> <laughs> I almost guarantee you that's gonna happen. That that's just how things happen, you know, that's gonna be so cool. Um, well, yeah, so I want to just really quickly talk about Brawless and like the intro, like, like, what were you, what were you doing on that track? Cause it's like, you have this theme of like bringing people to you, you know what I mean? Like, so talk to us a little about, about Brawless in general and then like the intro. Yeah. The Brawless in general has this energy of victory. Like it's very triumphant. It's very it's way more aggressive than all the places you'll go. All the places you'll go is very sweet, rainbows and shit. And Brawless is totally more aggressive. And I feel like that reflects kind of where I am. I feel like I'm on this, I have this trailblazing energy where I'm just, I'm unafraid. All the places you'll go is sort of like me, you, the listeners are listening in on me, discover who I am, what my core beliefs are. And then Brawless is like, I'm not scared anymore, let's go. So on that intro, it literally just felt like, I don't know, when a woman gets home and you take off your bra and you get to work, that's what that feels like to me. So that's what that was all about. Hell yeah. No, yeah, it, it's, the energy on that project is great. And uh, I love the song PMS and your quote, uh, you're walking in the rooms overly present now. Yes. Talk to us about that. I think that's, first of all, it's a great quote. And then second of all, like being overly present, 
that's such a cool like way to phrase that but i think it's really important to be really present you know i think it's just it's almost one of the most important things you can do when you're in certain rooms or with certain people yes absolutely like now i i've transitioned from working alone to working with a team and i view my music um two sides like you know besides the whole god thing i also recognize that i am dochi is a business and so with it being a business now we're elevating and I'm in different rooms, I'm speaking to different people and I'm having to do business in a different way. And so um, the walking in the rooms and I'm overly present, I've been practicing presence like crazy recently. And even when I walk into a room, like I just, I don't feel a need to no longer. Now that I've matured, I don't feel a need to assert myself all the time verbally, but I assert with my presence, with knowing who I am and my security. And so, um, I forgot the question. I mean, that was really it. You know, I just wanted to jam on being overly present. But yeah, no, that PMS song goes hard. Thank you. Thank you. I was really feeling some type of way when I wrote that. Like, it was a bad studio day. It just wasn't flowing and I was frustrated. I was like, man, fuck this. I'm PMS. I was literally PMSing and I knew it. And I was just like, man, I don't. I don't know. I just feel like women all the time, we not only do we have to be really present in situations and you got to be cleaned up and proper and you got to be nice, but you also have to assert yourself all while being on your fucking period. It's a lot. Man. <laughs> Bluntly if, said. If only in general, in general, if only more people understood like what it really meant to be a woman in so many situations, you know, it's. Yeah. A lot of, like, you know what I mean? Like, more people need to think about that every day. <laughs> yeah. You can tell I've been talking to my wife a lot. <laughs> more people need to think about that every day. I love that. Uh, hell yeah. So we got to talk about Gary V. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, so me and Gary, as you know, and as anyone listening knows, we have a playlist and we listen to music and we share music. And we just been talking about you a lot. and. You mentioned right before we went live that you know you were you were consuming Gary's content for years now. Yes. So like, how did you first get into Gary, and like, what what have you learned from consuming so much of it? So I was following Gary before Gary was on, like before the Gary V channel even started, and I can't remember the name of the platform, but I know you had to pay for it, and I was paying for it. I don't think it not Squarespace. That's like a website building one. It's another one. It, it's similar to like a Patreon or something like that. But um, I was paying for this, and he was doing these like business lessons on something. And at the time, I was selling fried chicken at school. I was selling fried chicken and donuts at school. I've always been like just had an entrepreneurial spirit about myself. So I just wanted to learn more about how to expand my business. I was watching his videos. He got on YouTube. I saw that he was in the wine business, just went through a rabbit hole of Gary Vee. And then I was watching his channel for years and I literally would have a Gary Vee notebook and take notes and study him and study how he was the way he was. And I believe that Gary Vee and Sophia and Russo are two people that influence why I have that ambition and that fuck you, let's go attitude. <laughs> Because I always hear Gary Vee in my head, like, fuck that, go, don't stop. Like, I love it. So that's how I know about Gary Vee. And I've been following him for a long time. I have two of his books. Like, I love him. <laughs> Let's go, man. If it wasn't, uh, well, hopefully everything clears up soon with quarantine and everything, but you got to come to New York and you got to sit down with Gary and we got to, we got to just jam. It's going to be great. Love to. Absolutely. So uh, last two questions. Um, mm -hmm. So I know you're into books. I know you're into entrepreneurship. I know you're into like hustling. Like a lot of the people who listen and follow us as a platform are the same way. Um, could you just give us like one book that they should check out to like help their keep their like hustle mode going or get inspired? It could be one of the ones you named earlier, but just anything that we could quote out and s tell people mm -hmm. like check this out. Um, a happy pocket full of money that changed my life. Have you read it? No, you gotta read that book, a happy pocket full of money. And I put 
I put everything on it. I set a goal last year to, um, it was like the end of 2020. I set a goal to uh, reach $80,000 by the end of the year. And by the end of the year, I hit 50K nice. in, in four months. So Man. I will put it on, I will put my words on it. It was because I read that book and I applied that knowledge. So that's the book. Yeah. All right, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. I'm gonna go get that book. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, last question. Uh 2021. What's up? Like what what's where are we going? What are you doing? Like just anything. Give us anything. Like I know you can't speak on everything, but just give us anything. Album. Oh shit. Album mode. Uh, after Brawless, it's no more music until this album. 2020 is about the album, and I'm not letting up, period. Hell yeah. All right. Well, yeah, for, for everyone uh, listening, watching, like it's I am Dochi with two eyes yes. on Instagram. And uh, I guess that's probably the best way to hit you, right? Or like just follow you. Instagram and Twitter on I am Dochi, uh, Snapchat, I am Dochi, everything I am Dochi. Yes. Hell yeah. Let's go. I'm excited. Like I, I say this a couple times privately but i'll say it publicly like I've, i'm fully in on you you know what i mean like you're a real artist and you don't come across that every day so thank you cool. thank you so much for having me it's been an honor this is really fun thank you oh, yeah